Welcome in and welcome back to the CHGO Blackhawks post-game podcast. The Hawks beat the Flyers 5-1 to one in Philadelphia. Two-point nights from Lucas Reichel, Philip Kershev, and woo, Joey Anderson. <laughs> Arvis Sutterbloom, very, very good. Yes. The whole team was very, very good. We're going to break it all down here. Thanks for being with us. I see already a lot of people have smashed that like button. We love it. Keep doing that if you're just jumping in. We appreciate you uh, hitting that like button for us and make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube page. And if you weren't with us for the watch along, something we're doing tonight is asking people to share this link with a friend. If you've got a hockey friend, a Hawks fan friend that maybe hasn't checked us out yet or did early and forgot about us, send them that post game link. Tell them to come and join the party here because we are going to celebrate. Wins are few and far between. So when we get them, we're going to enjoy them. I'm Jay Zawaski with Greg Boyson, Mario Tirbasi. Law is with us here. What's up? Hello, Law. Hi. Uh, lots of stuff. Why don't we just get to the four-star stuff right away so we can start getting into the game. The three stars of the game, Joey Anderson, whoa, whoa. one goal, whoa. one assist. Number two star of the game, Connor Bedard with an assist and six shots on goal. And your number one star of the game, Philip Kurashev with a goal and an assist. So here are your fourth star nominees. Vote for them on our YouTube chat. We'll reveal the winner at the end of the game, <laughs> end of the show. Uh, Lucas Reichel with a goal and an assist. Arvid Soderblom with 29 saves on 30 shots. And Wyatt Kaiser was a plus two in 2035 of ice time with a block shot. So those are your nominees. Get them in. <coughs> Fellas, where do we want to start? First, we want to tell uh, Ravi come up. Uh, no, no CHGO Cubs show tonight, yeah. even though they did lose 11 to 2. Yes. Um, um, that's, that's, that's sad. You guys are the Cubs fans here. Quick Cubs post game show. That was bad. Fire council. This councilman guy sucks. Get him out of here. Perfect. They should bring back Ricky Renteria and Dale Sveum. Where's Mike Quattro when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Perfect. All right. There's your uh, Cubs post game. Yeah. <laughs> Got this, 160 to go. You'll be This right. was, uh, for the for, from a Blackhawks standpoint, this was a uh, really good team win. Everyone was was going. Everyone was contributing. Guys were Guys were playing their roles. The right way, um, and you got a you got a game from Arvid Soderblom that is not his norm, and yeah. that's good because his norm this season has been, you know, four goals allowed, uh, you know, not making, uh, not making saves when they they mattered most, and yeah, the goal he gave up, we talked about yeah. it on the watch along, not great. You'd, that's one you'd you'd like to see a save. Most goalies would make that save, but the key is. He only gave up one of those. Yeah, he usually gives up right. two or three of those. Yep. Don't don't let it snowball. Yeah, and he like they were up two nothing. They played great in the first period. They come out, they get that goal from way too far out in the opening seconds, and then yeah. like five seconds later, Konechny hits the post on a wide open <laughs> shot. You're talking go from two nothing to yeah, two two. Right. We're probably not talking about a yeah. victory now if Konechny doesn't hit the post because then. Yeah. The the fragileness that we have seen a lot Fragile. from this team probably creeps in. Mm -hmm. Flyers get, you know, they they get some some mojo, some riz going, and then uh, <laughs> you know they start bussing, and all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> see, and they got their hip. yachts uh, in your face. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Uh, that's and, a callback. And that is why you, <laughs> uh, that is why you watch the watch along. <laughs> Don't ever do that again. <laughs> uh, I said traumatic shivers <laughs> from your missile, little missile lot. Uh, yikes, yikes, yikes. Ooh, shivers down my spine. But you're right, Mario. That was a complete team effort. Oh, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. we do. I, we are always reacting in real time. And recency bias is a thing. But I failed to... When you put, the, aside from maybe the wins over Toronto, when you look at the season as a whole and you say convincing, 
commanding wins over teams that are decent. Yeah. This is up there. This is probably a top five win of the season. It's, I mean, we talked about it in the, um, during the watch along, you know, as, as the game was going, it was just like, let's get a win where they get out to a lead yeah. and they don't concede it. They don't have to chase a game. Like let's, let's, let's have a, a game where start to finish things look right. Things look, things are going your way. You're executing the way that you're expected to. And that was a game that we had tonight. And, and I think they haven't been, uh, you know, there haven't been a lot of those this season. So to get one against the flyers team, it's different having it be against a Flyers team who is fighting for playoff position, fighting yep. for being in the playoffs. You know, they're, they're, they're not a lock in there yet, but it's a team that has something to fight for. And, you know, it's, it's good to see it against that kind of team on the road too. Like very little to be upset about in this game, which is a great way to watch a Blackhawks game at it's this point of the season. Two of those, two out of the last three games have been like that. Yeah. And what's been common about those two games? As a collective, CHGO has been together to watch. That's right. Those games that is together. True. And they've won both of those games. The takeover take on Tuesday. Over and the watch along. The watch along tonight. I mean, we just so, need our own CHGO dedicated suite in the United yeah, Center. If we, we could have if we could have forty one takeovers and forty one watch alongs. Give us our own suite <laughs> and we invite different people each game. Yeah, right. CHGO diehards yeah. to the game. And it's definitely in the 200 level, not the one upstairs. Stanley Cup <laughs> champs because they'd be 41-0 and at home. Mm -hmm. They yeah. would never lose in the playoffs. Right. Yeah. Just Danny, I thought the Hawks Jamie understood marketing. Happen. I mean, <laughs> you know. I mean, we, we, we have resurrected Nick Foligno's career. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you're welcome, Nick. Yeah, yeah maybe <laughs> some more hits next time, pal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got some super chats to get to. We're going to do that. Thank you for those. We'll get to them in a little bit here. We will not forget about you, but let's let's focus on some individuals that deserve some focusing on today with Lucas Reichel, number one. I yeah. mean, Luke talked about a pregame and just said, since he's come up, we've seen a lot more fight out of him. What we want to see is fight from 0-0 zero, zero to 60. And they got it in this game. Lucas Reichel was engaged from the moment the game started yeah. till the final horn sounded, and he was excellent. And this is the guy that we thought we were getting all year. Yeah. And I'm so happy for him that he's finally getting production because the moral victory of, hey, good game. Hey, that was better. We want to see a little more. Those sort of things. Fine, dandy, all those things. But, like, to get two points on the board – has got to be huge for his confidence. I'm so happy for him that he was able to do that. Yeah, he had, what, four shots on goal just in the four first period goal, alone? Yeah. Like, Didn't have I, any after that, but, you know, he was still playing, mean, still playing great. Again, he had a, had a takeaway, and I believe that was the takeaway that led to uh, the Anderson goal. To the goal, yeah. So, yep. yeah. So, um, just, yeah, that's exactly what we want to see out of him. That's what we've been waiting to see out of him all year. We've mm -hmm. seen flashes in games where, oh, he makes a play, but then you don't notice him. Again, yeah. But tonight, the whole night, he he was uh, really doing really well, and that that goal, uh, the trusty old wraparound, but it was still a good play because the first shot was denied, but he was yeah. able to stick with it yeah. and just push it under the skate for the goal. I mean, that's a great play. Um, and play and and playing around the net, like I, yeah. I think one of the, you know, kind of a knock starting to to get tied to Reichel was that. You know, he's he's a guy that kind of sticks a little bit to the perimeter. He'll peel off of a play rather than drive to the net. So to be playing around the net, make something happen within that 10-foot radius of the crease, like, that's good. He doesn't always have to go there, and I don't think he's a guy that's – he's not going to be Zach Hyman. But to be able to go there and be productive gives you that confidence to be like, I've done it before. I can yep. go do it again. Yep. And that's what, I mean, we saw as we were pulling our hair out, what's left of it um, – Early in the season, watching Reichel play, I'm speaking for myself. Thank you. Um, that was the frustration. Is like, dude, go, yeah. take what they give you. And there were so many instances where he had a play and was like, no, I'm going to peel off and look to drop this puck off or yeah. center it or whatever. The attack, it's weird. Like, I don't know. It feels like the message that he got from the coaching staff was pretty clear. Like, here's what you have to do: mm. go to the middle of the ice, compete every shift you're out there. I don't know why that was hard for him to get for so long, 
But finally, it seems like he's gotten the message. And, yeah. like, look, like we were talking about during the watch along, it even took Connor Bedard a little bit of time to learn, like, okay, here's what it will take for me to have success at the NHL level on a nightly basis. He figured it out. And Lucas Reichel is not Connor Bedard. We know that. Right. Maybe it's taken him a little bit longer. Maybe the success came a little too easily at the end of last year. And maybe he just felt like, all right, it's here. I'm good. I Look, look what I just did. What was it, 11 points, 12 points in his last 19 games, whatever it was, and he just basically thought, maybe he just basically thought, I'm done, I got it, right. here we go. Now now on to superstardom, and it just didn't come that easy this year. So maybe a little bit of humbling was good for him, but, man, I've loved the way he's played since he's been back, and tonight was his best game of the season. I don't think there's much doubt about it. No, I mean, being able to get on, on the score sheet twice, um, that's that's a big thing, especially this year where, you know, his, his point production has not been uh, what we expected it to be. So, yeah, definitely one of his one of his better games all year um, and at a critical point, too. For sure. I mean, we want we when he got this call up, we said we, it'd be great if he could finish strong, get that momentum in the next year. And, and that's what we've been seeing so far. Hopefully the goal tonight kind of you know, uh, opens the floodgates, so to speak. And, nice. you know, we see him net another three, four, five before the end of the season. There's no doubt he has the talent to go on a heater here and get another, you know, half a dozen goals before the end of the year. Um, but we'll see. But it's what you wanted to see out of him. And uh, you just keep getting that momentum going forward. And, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if his season continues beyond – the Blackhawks. I, I I think he's going to go back down to Rockford for the eight, for the Calder Cup playoffs. I would imagine uh, Wyatt Kaiser too, who mm-hmm. a lot of people talking about him, rightfully so, because he was really good again tonight. And get those guys some playoff games. Get those guys. I mean, they're going to help the Ice Hogs. You're getting mm-hmm. two dynamic players. Hell yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The Ice Hogs are playing. Look what Zach Sanford and Rem Pitlick did for them. Yeah. Right. Seriously. Like yes. that's, yeah, those you are, know, those are way Cole guys. Playing you send your four A hockey guys down. and uh, they're, yeah. they're up 4 nothing against the Wolves right now after two periods, and they're good. looking good. Uh, they get that they get that uh, bye into the quarterfinal. That would be nice. they got a team that. They are what AH. These are the they got a roster right now as the type that wins Calder Cups. Yeah, mm-hmm. they've got depth. They've got your your NHL prospects, but you also have your AHL veterans. Your David Gusts, mm-hmm. your Zach Sanfords, Pitlick, uh, you know Brent Sini, Luke Philp is back, and yeah. like that's huge. Like they got a really good team, and if they get the solid goaltending that they've been getting in the been postseason, yeah. Yep. It could be a real deep run for them. Like the Admirals nice. looked unbeatable forever, but the Ice Hawks have beat them three out of the four last times they played. They're running away with the division, but they're a beatable team. Uh, should be fun. I look forward to it. I I, I want to go bounce there to as many possible Ice Hawks playoff games. As yeah. I, I would have no problem taking a drive uh, <laughs> right. to Rockford in early June for a Calder Cup final game. That would be fine. No problem. That would be that fine. Yeah, I mean, if they get that that number three seed in the in the Central Division, then you're talking about that first round would be against presumably Grand Rapids. Yeah. And the way the AHL does it, it's a best of five in the opening round, but the first two games go to the quote-unquote lower seed, you, they'd be at home. So you'd have two games at home to start that playoff series. You get one of two, yeah. then you just need one, you need you know two more, and one of them's at home. So like, you know, I, it's 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 a good setup to be there. Yeah, Rock, Rockford, you know, they're they're going to be a team to to be reckoned with. That's that's for sure. And you know, as as uh, junior playoffs end, they have a couple guys that are signed already to ELCs that maybe. Once yeah. their junior season Yuri. ends, they go up to Rockford, maybe they get in a game or so and see what happens. But yeah. Yuri Felchman is is joining yep. the team on an ATO. Someone was asking if Slaggart is eligible. Um I don't believe so. No. And I don't think they'll send him anyway. Uh he had a full college season already. He hasn't played there yet. I think they're kinda like, Yeah, you're good. You you're playing here. You know, start getting ready for next season. Yeah. Kind of, well, they did that with Vlasic, remember? Like Vlasic they, they and Kaiser. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and Comesso. They, like, they didn't play him at all. They sent him down. But Vlasic yeah. never got sent down last year. 
or two years ago. Um, when they first signed out of college. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think they'll do that because they signed. If they had, if those guys came out of college and signed an ATO, then they could. Yeah. Which uh, isn't the case. Well, we got a lot of people watching right now. Make sure you smash that like button for us. Uh, we talked about Lucas Reichel to start the game, looking at the big blue lines that we like to talk about. Yeah. Was he was the second highest rated Hawk after Joey Anderson. The guy we're going to talk about next was third. That's yes. called a tease, mister. That's called a tease. And what we like to do, what we love to do during the watch alongs, during our post games, we like to drink some of these ice cold Coors Light because even on an exciting win, a feel good win, you got to settle right. yourself down, get ready to do the show, and nothing helps us chill like our friends chill. at Coors Light. Chill. Is it cold? Chill. My it is cold. It's still cold. Are, my mountains are still blue. I am my below the mountain, so it's hard to tell. My uh, my mountains are Tar Heel blue. There you go. There's cold enough. Cold enough. Yeah, they blew it last night. You know why it's Jerks. that way? Why? Because it's cold lagered, mm. cold filtered, and cold packaged for a smoother finish. Packaged. And when those mountains turn blue, cold. it is as cold as the Colorado Rockies. It's very cold. The mountains. If you're a baseball fan. And yeah, the baseball fan. <laughs> when it's time to chill, <laughs> open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, cool and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. When it's time to chill, Coors Light's the beer we reach for. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Do that for us. Go to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Order yourself one Coors Light just to irritate the Instacart guy. thank you. Or a bunch of single cans. (laughs) could you you imagine being one of those workers and being like i got a delivery order for a 12 ounce a 12 ounce in a a bowl of soup (laughs) just a package of oyster crackers that's it there you go uh celebrate responsibly as always coors brewing company i would like one can of coors light and And one rib (laughs) three fun size snicker bars please yes when, when i i used to do uh uh, pizza delivery for a uh, deep dish pizza chain and um, there were some times I would get orders for like a personal pizza and a can of soda and I'm like I, I have to drive 15 minutes to go deliver this yep. slice of pizza I am drunk and or high like, yes, you yeah do. I was like all right buddy. <laughs> we're just lazy all right, right. buddy this, this tip better be anyway uh, I have to give the tagline go ahead celebrate responsibly Coors Brewing Company Golden Colorado yes absolutely it's my turn to tell you the people about. Prize I handled picks. my read. I'm not. <laughs> I didn't look at the list, but I know. Yes, it is your turn. Yes, you have to do prize picks. Perfect. As well, discussed pregame. Well, it's going to flip over to bio steel table. And I didn't do the. Uh, I didn't. I didn't look at the. I didn't look at the order. I knew. I knew what I had to do, but not the order. But hey, prize picks. They are the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers instead of betting, battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. All you got to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. If you're watching the watch along, you'll see that we collectively here on the CHGO crew uh, put our heads together and put together a prize pick Six pick, pick them entry. Um, and I believe we, we hit four, four, out, four of out of six. So yeah. get a percentage back of the uh, the money that yeah, we put down. Play. Not all of them. Play. Yeah, it's a flex play. It was Greg's picks that didn't win. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. really all of Greg's <laughs> I mean, wins. I, I never would have said Nick Felina would have two yeah, of his Yeah. Uh, but that's the good thing about prize picks is that you can, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can put... Uh, a six pick entry together, Each and if you, you don't, by the way. and if you don't hit all six, you can still get some money back, um, and you can bet on so many different, or you can uh, my account. You can have uh, entries on so many different things. It's not just you know the NHL or the NBA or Major League Baseball. You can go to college basketball, women's college basketball, because it's tournament time. If you didn't know tournament where you've been, time. tournament time Never for uh, men's and women's college basketball. Be part of the action with Prize Picks. You can win now up to a hundred times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars with the NBA, the NHL, college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports bet, sports app. You can also pick anything between, um, you know, Australian football 
You can bet darts at four in the morning oh, if you're weird yeah. like me. <laughs> You've got a problem. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Wait a minute. One eight hundred gambler. One eight hundred gambler, dude. <laughs> call it yesterday. You can bet on. You were betting on Call of Duty. F one. You can bet on Call of Duty. League of Legends. Or their entries. entries. You can do entries on all those things. Uh, and just get absolutely wild with prize picks. And you can do that by going to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and using the code CHGO, and you get you can get a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash CHGO. Use the code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right. That was a minute. Jake will be pleased. Uh, let's knock out these super <laughs> chats real quick. It said, enter your own experience. I'm not, I'm not blaming you. <laughs> Region Rev with five bucks says, love seeing Luke talking to the players all throughout the game. Going to line mates. Enough of his relying on the locker room leading. Sure. And Hawkeye yeah. says, bro, what a game. Bro. 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 Uh, bro. What a game, bro. <laughs> what a uh, game, bro. Offense bro. started firing and good to the guys. Putes out there, bro. <laughs> play with some energy the after the last game. Go Hawks. Also, RIP Minnesota in the NCAA uh, tournament. Yes. Yeah, we'll get to some of that towards the end of the show. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, thank you for those. We're not very, making very fun much. of you. We're making no, no, fun at you. It's the bro. It's an old, it's an old joke. Yeah. Uh, the next guy we want to talk about is Wyatt Kaiser. Um, and, uh, well, why don't we pull that uh, Luke Richardson that we had uh, pregame. This is Luke before the game today talking about what has changed in Wyatt Kaiser's game from his first time in Chicago to now. That first game is a tough game to come back to, a big, strong, fast team in L.A., and I think, you know, once he got through that first period, I thought he's, he was, uh, he's been excellent since. I think he's been using his skating, um, much like at the end of last year and maybe at the beginning of this year, uh, you know, just confident uh, in his ability to kill plays, and even even if our team is caught, uh, he had a great play on, on uh uh, Kachuk getting back uh, that he blocked a shot and had a breakaway and he basically uh, snuffed it out with his speed so uh, he's been uh, doing that without running all over the place uh, uh, where I think he started chasing a little bit at, before he went down to the minors and I think going down to the Rockford it really helped him just settle his game down and use that skating ability to get out of trouble or, or help his teammates instead of getting into it so uh, uh, it's been impressive it's uh, that's what it's there for I think that's what helped with uh, Alex Vlasic last year, just to uh, uh, play big minutes in important situations and be comfortable in that situation. And I think it's worked for Kaiser as well. That was before the game. Mm -hmm. And I think this game was such an illustration of it. And one play in particular, it was the final goal of the game, the ant whistle goal, where Kaiser's in the defensive zone. He's got three flyers closing in on him, and he – makes the outlet pass at the perfect time yeah. right to Joey Anderson, whoop, who gets to McKenzie at whistle for the fifth goal of the game. It's a little thing, but go back and watch that replay and just watch Wyatt Kaiser's awareness of his time and space, which was the biggest issue he had yeah. early in this year, was like, dude, get rid of it. Get rid of the puck. Because it wasn't Make for him, play. it wasn't that he was too quick getting rid of it. He was too slow getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. Now he seemed, and look, it's one play. But we're going by what we've seen since he's come back, too. It's, it's an example of a bigger Yeah, but that play point. in particular really shows his understanding of time and space and the right amount of oomph to put on the pass itself, mm -hmm. where it gets to where it needs to go, but it's on the tape, it's receivable. How many times have we seen maybe the right play was made, but it wasn't made the right way? Yeah. And it's too hard, or it jumps over the stick or whatever. That was a perfect pass for Wyatt Kaiser. Yeah, it was a great great setup and and it's one of those things that these guys who go from college or junior or play in Europe or, or whatever it is and they make the jump to professional hockey um the, the the timing of everything it it everything condenses down so you have to make physical decisions and mental decisions faster and we talked with uh Landon Slager um a couple of days ago about that that thing and he was he said you know i thought things were going to be happening faster than they are so he's actually like thinking the game faster than he than is expected of him which is which is helping but a lot of times like these guys will will jump right into the nhl and they look like they're struggling go down to the ahl kind of figure out the the speed and the pace of the game at the professional level down there um and then come back up to the nhl and they're they know like okay 
this is how fast the game plays at the AHL level. It's going to be even faster at the NHL level, and they can adapt to that. So I think I I would think that you know what Kaiser did early this season was definitely you know kind of getting thrown into the deep end, and at some point the organization realized, hey, he needs he needs to learn these lessons elsewhere in in, in Rockford, and and he did, and he was really good with them, uh, and then got the opportunity to come back up and has showcased in these games what he's learned. Yeah, he he's he's looked very good. And it's how he looked in the preseason, where yeah. he was kind of, I don't know, I think you would say, not that it was a complete 0% chance he'd make the team, but kind of an outside shot that he would do it. Yeah. And when you looked at the depth chart of the Rockford-bound guys, he probably wasn't even at the top of that. You'd probably have Del Mastro and Allen ahead of him there, but played really well in preseason and kind of forced their hands and said, He's got to make the team. Look at the way he's playing. Yeah. And then just as things went on, he started, you know, it started to, be, to become too much. So, look, it's uh, the organization's being patient and patient with the guys they can be with. Korchinski, you know, I, I know there's some conversation going on about him in the chat. He can't go to the AHL. Yeah. So, I think there's more benefit to him coming up here and struggling a little bit versus just deferring the Western Hockey League for another year and what do you really learn there not much and then what do you do then send him to rockford next year you've already got his nhl career started i think although he hasn't been perfect he's been good more than he's been bad yeah so i think they're just handling this thing very well do you want to hear some torts quotes sure oh i love uh, love torts quotes uh, after just, a just, loss uh he said quote we sucked <laughs> true uh i think we hit bottom tonight oh boy Correct. <laughs> and from our guy Charlie O'Connor at uh, PHLY, Tortorello was pretty open about the fact that he thinks his team is gassed right now, called tonight's game a drubbing, and noted in particular that he thinks Sanheim and York are running on fumes at the moment. Hmm. I wonder why everybody's so tired. Maybe because you like make them go a million miles an hour every game. Yep. And I'm assuming every practice, too. And now it's four losses in a row. And the Capitals have passed you for third place in the division. Maybe pedal to the metal all 82 games is not the, like you don't take nights off, but like, you know, a guy like Torts grinds on a team, especially a young team. And mentally. Yep. Yes. It's not just about Burns bag out. skates or intense. It's the mental thing of if I make a mistake, I'm going to get called out. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to be punished. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You've got to let young players, and look, even veterans, like, Perfection is not the standard that's going to keep anyone motivated or going. That's why torts has such, and coaches like torts have such a short shelf life because you can take it for a while. And at the end of it, you're like, F this. Like, I'm yeah. done. It wears, it wears on you. And I, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd imagine this team that is, has overperformed this season. Um, you'd think that there was eventually going to be a, uh, a wall hit and losing 5-1 to the Blackhawks when you're in the final 10 games of the season and you're fighting for a playoff spot that's it's not hitting a wall that's, that's hitting the building <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a that's a that's a face plant for sure they so. got seven games left they have 82 points uh right now in the metro the uh capitals also have 82 points but jumped ahead of them uh for more regulation wins and uh they have two games in hand. They have nine games left. The Flyers only have seven. Oh, wow. And then you have the Red Wings, who are behind the Flyers for the last wild card spot. Two points behind them with eight games to play. And you have the Islanders, who we're going to see on Tuesday. The Islanders play the Flyers uh, on Monday before we play the Blackhawks play the Islanders on Tuesday. They have 77 points, but they could catch... I mean, they're they five points behind Philly. both Washington and Philly. They're in yeah. the same division. Yeah. But they're going to need – they have nine games left, but they probably have to win seven of those nine games to realistically yeah. do something. I mean, if the Flyers keep losing, that obviously will make it – But That helps, but yeah. If they lose to the Flyers Monday, then they're pretty much toast. Yeah. They have to win that game. But uh, we'll see. Nobody wants that last playoff spot in the East. Everybody <laughs> no. just keeps losing. So long as it's not Detroit. That's exactly what it's I It's not think. Detroit. Uh, the torch <laughs> stuff reminds me of, I was reading the Kim Mulkey 
piece, the LSU basketball Holy coach in the, uh, the Washington ex- Post today. <laughs> okay. uh, it's a bit of a uh, nothing burger, but uh, there's a reason that scared. the coaches that still coach that way are in college. Because you can only tolerate being treated that way for so long before you just lose your damn mind as mm-hmm, a player. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And like you just and now that you're with Torch, you've got these these guys are professionals. You yeah. know, they're not college kids, they're not children. Even if they're young hockey players, they're professionals. They get paid just like you do. Some yeah. many of them much more than you get paid. Lay off. It doesn't like I don't know. It's weird. Like, and look, I obviously he is a a good coach. He knows the game, gets results. And I will say too that people that know him talk about him in a way off the ice that is endearing. Yeah, like he seems to be a good person, but the coaching style has to change. And Drive Secure twenty four seven says Mike Keenan was good for yeah. about two or three years. Where's I was welcome? Exactly. That's a lot you of had guys Dave like Manson that. trying to stab Mike Keenan with a skate. I mean, that's there's a true lots story. of examples yeah, of that. Like, you look at you look at guy like Ger- Gerard Gallant. Everywhere he goes, his team plays great for like a year and a half, and then everybody just they can't wait to get rid of him. Yeah. Right? It happened in Florida. It happened in Vegas. It happened with the Rangers. Uh, Vancouver. Yeah, there, there's been plenty of guys. Keenan is another good example. Torts. Daryl Sutter is another guy that yeah. gets you results, wins you a couple Stanley Cups, and another really good person. But eventually, you just like. Well, if I keep him here, my entire team is just going to walk out. So I can't fire all 23 players. It's got to be the coach. Well, and that's where I think we, as you know, Blackhawks fans, the appreciation should, should be there for Luke Richardson in this regard because I think he, he has a mind for both the game that he played in the eighties, nineties and two thousands and the game now and the guy and the guys who do play it. And I think he, he's talked about it a lot being able to, you know, connect with a guy like Nick Foligno on his team and be able to connect with players like Kevin Korchinski and Connor Bedard, where it's, you know, completely different generations of hockey, but still being able to get the most out of them and be able to communicate with them in ways that is beneficial to them. Whereas, you know, some of these these guys that are in the, the, the torts realm of things, it's like, I've been coaching this way since the 90s or early 2000s or whatever. You know, it's just hard on these guys and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, beat the message into their heads and all that stuff. And it, it just, it doesn't work uh, for, for a long time anymore. So, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, it, it can work for a little bit. And for a team that is... Uh, wasn't expected to be in this position like Philly, like you've gotten, you've squeezed pretty much all the juice out of, out of, you know, what you could get out of him this year. And it's it's kind of not surprising that his style with this team and the expectations, it all kind of feels like this is the time where it was like, either if, if you're going in the right direction, it could still work, but you've lost lost a couple of games in a row. You've dropped one now to the Blackhawks. Like it, kind of feels like this is where the wheels are going to The hard thing, though, off. for them is they have overachieved this year, regardless of whether or not they make the playoffs or just miss the playoffs. They weren't even supposed to be sniffing the playoffs. Mm, right. So now even if you do think that Torts wore their asses out and ground them into the dirt and now they've got nothing left in the tank, you can't really make a move because they have massively overachieved this year. Yeah, yeah I wonder- Unless some veteran comes to you and says – here are A, B, C, D, E, F, G reasons he should be fired. I don't. And you can't yeah, ignore. Him. I mean, I don't think he goes anywhere. And 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 uh, like, I wonder how the front office is going to feel if they just missed the playoffs and they're like picking fifteenth. It's like, man, we were. I mean, some of those moves that Danny Breer made right off the bat were all like, hey, we want Macklin Celebrini. Yeah, like giving away Kevin Hayes for nothing. Uh, yeah. you know, some of the other moves they made, you just you could they were downgrading their roster big time. So, okay, maybe you get like, hey, fun, we might make a playoff and we might get to the playoffs, it'll be fun. But now, if you miss it, you come all the way to the final two weeks of the season and you miss it. I don't know if I'm the general manager, I'm gonna be like, eh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> well, uh, the cool. uh, bio seal table has been flipped in Philadelphia. And when that happens, you know, you probably got some stains on that rug. 
and you're going to need some new flooring. And maybe they should give a call over to our friends at Empire today where you could shop at home or at Arena. Convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation, and a low price guarantee. Empire today is the best place to get new flooring. So, of course, they have copycats, but they can't be beat. They live and breathe flooring. And really, these days, who doesn't? They've got that virtual floor designer. It's a great way to see how new floors are going to look in your home or in your room or in your locker room, wherever you need to get them. You just snap a picture, take a look at there. It's exactly what it's going to look like in your space, which is awesome. They pride themselves on convenient shop at home service and shopping for floors at a big box store. That sucks. You might talk to someone today who's working in flooring that was yesterday working in plumbing. You don't get that with Empire today. That's all they do. Schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use the promo code CHGO. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash CHGO for details. And the best offers of the year are going on right now during the March Radness sales events. <laughs> so make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 and Fox Lake so you can join in on all the savings. So rad. As one of the top-selling <laughs> Chevy dealers in the entire Midwest, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. Perfect tailgate vehicles await you at Ray Chevy during Truck Month. Truck for month. a limited time, they're Trucks. offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverados with over 100 currently available. They also have 125 vehicles priced under $20,000. Seriously, guys and girls, can pricing get more affordable? I think not. Hello, brother. And you know what's the most affordable thing out there is free. And that's what you're going to get this month at Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake, a free oil change. Yes. And all you need to do is mention CHGO and scheduling your oil change. Start the spring off right and schedule it by April 1st. That's like two days from now. So hurry. Visit fast. Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com. They've been serving the community since 1963. Fine new roads. All right. We got some super chats to get to. Thank you for those. By the way, make sure you smash that like button for us. A lot of people watching, not a lot of likes. We got to change that. Uh, we got one here from Jordan, five dollars. Says first time in here for your live show. Look forward to your shows every day. Though Silent Bob was a better look alike for Greg at the game on Tuesday. That's true, but he's not from Calgary. He's not from Calgary. Yeah, if he was from was Calgary, he would have been up there. He's Instead from of, he's from New Jersey. Yeah. Well, when the Devils coming to town next year, maybe we'll do our takeover that night. Sure. And uh, Windy City Hockey, our pal, who's here every game. Uh, with three dollars and fifteen cents, says three point Joey Anderson. Woo, woo. Two points. He corrected himself in a later chat. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll still take, take your money. <laughs> We're not refunding yeah, the dollar. No, Sorry, when you your dollar back. <laughs> oh, no, the other chat was just a regular old chat. So he's good. And right. uh, I want to get to this uh, little uh, comment that was made earlier in the show from Nithkin Perusals. It says I still don't think Soderblom sees the puck very well, but rebound control and positioning was. Better from him tonight. Yeah, he they actually added a shot to the Flyers, so he's top thirty of thirty one. Oh, nice. Uh, and yeah, I like. They I think Seth Jones. Uh, you know, I can check for <laughs> you. I, I've, I've been looking, dude. I've been refreshing this for a lot. That they did. It has two shots for Seth yes. Jones as of now. I've, I've been refreshing, looking for another Felino hit and another Jones shot. Yeah, but I think with Soderblom, the rebound was rebounds were better tonight. But they just been better. Yeah, f- for the last few starts the rebound show has been better it's just slow to react to stuff and the i and tracking I, is bad and i do think there's times where there are pretty routine shots on goal that he doesn't see until they're past them or or you know bouncing off the boards behind him um and i don't know if that's something that can be coached you know quick twitch muscles and reflexes yeah. and vision are not something that jimmy wade can like it, it's not the matrix he can't just like plug right. this into him and <laughs> make him better at it so i think yeah you know as we talk about projecting who's going to be the goalies next year we were talking about it during the uh the watch along i don't know and look he was great tonight don't get me wrong deserves praise but if we look at the big picture of Soderblom, i don't know how you can come into day one of camp next year with him as a as a, as a backup I, I just don't think i think you've got to find a way to move on yeah i this this performance was was really good um but it's not the expectation from him uh, the expectation from him is allowing a bunch of goals allowing goals that multiple goals that you'd be like uh, average goalie should be able to save that so 
yeah, I mean this this is this is nice to see this kind of game from him. It's good for his confidence. It's you know it's good for his overall game. But this is it's an it's it's the exception to what his actual season has been. So I I think going into next year, you can see it. He can have games like this, but I don't know what he can show you over you know the off season and training camp that gives you confidence that like, yeah, we'll go with Morazic and Soderbloom again. And this team will expect to have better results. So I don't know. I, I don't know if they go outside the organization to address it. I don't know if they say, you know, we'll, we'll if someone outperforms him in training camp and the preseason, whether it's Comezzo or Stauber or whatever, I don't know if they would say, okay, now that they're going to come up and send Soderblom down. I don't know. I don't know what they do. But I just I just don't think the morazic Soderblom tandem going into next year is should be your first option. I mean, you could do like a PTO for a veteran goalie who's looking for work and to see how the yeah. preseason goes. And if Soderblom is showing you more of the same, you just say, all right, we're going to lend you to whatever country in Europe – you prefer or just throw a dart at the map. Yeah, I mean, at that point, then you're you're saying he's done. Yeah, which I don't know. Maybe he's at that point. But. I don't. But the other thing too is like, why aren't they giving Stauber a look? Because he's more valuable to Rockford. Yeah, but I mean, Stauber and right now, are more valuable. Right now, of course. Right. But Soderblom's struggles had, were horrible in the beginning of the year, and Stauber was not bad. And he's been really good lately. Yeah, like I don't know. It's it's weird, and it. I don't know why it should just be outright dismissed that he doesn't get a shot next year. I, and I know you didn't just do that, but no, I'm talking I, about from a team perspective. I think they, I think they went the route of we want Arvid to figure it out at the NHL level, and we want our young guys like Camezo and Stauber to lead the Ice Hogs, and that was kind of the way that they went about it. I think making any kind of switch would have. You know, kind of throwing things out of out of whack, and honestly, like with the Ice Hogs, if you throw Soderblom down there, there's nothing that says he's gonna be he's gonna figure it out and be better. Like, yeah. what if he's this bad and costs the Ice Hogs so, games? Like, that's so that's still a problem. Can't track pucks, it's gonna yeah, be a problem in the AHL. Too. Right? Yeah, they yeah. still use pucks down there, right? Yes. 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 It doesn't. And as the Shawnee mentioned, Scott Powers, uh, is in his recent. On one of his recent articles uh, about you know some of these guys that are up, they may not even bring him back at all. In this. I don't know if they're sold on him as an NHL goalie. If they were, I think he'd be up here. I know he looked, his numbers look good, the little bit he had up here. But I don't know. I just, yeah, he's on a nine-game win streak in the, in the Ice Hogs, but his save percentage is still below 900. Yeah. His goals against is still over three. So, you know. He's winning games, but he's getting a lot of help there. Um, I don't think he's a long-term asset. Um, I think, you know, if you're not sold on Soderblom, and and, and frankly, you shouldn't be at this point. Um, if you're not sold on Stauber, then you definitely should be yeah. not sold on, <laughs> on Soderblom. Yeah. Um, there are a handful of guys out there you can bring in free agency that could be decent ba- upgrades. Uh, you know, hey, you can bring back former Blackhawk Kevin Langanen. Uh, you former can, Blackhawk. You can bring Malcolm up for, Subban. You can bring up former Blackhawk Anti Ranta. Former Blackhawk uh, Colin Delia. <laughs> yeah, like, but like Capo Kakinen's a guy I wouldn't mind. Yeah, uh, he's still only twenty seven, so like he's like hitting that prime age for goalies. Really good AHL goalie. Just, we'll get Linus uh, Allmark. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but he's a guy that could maybe be your backup. I think he's an upgrade. Uh, you know, a guy like Alex Nadelkovich, you know, he's a guy that be out there. He's not a kid anymore, but no. still not bad. Um, you know, a, a guy like Anthony Stolarz has been really good for a little bit. He's played in Florida. Not a kid, but a backup. You know, those are upgrades. Or, you know, maybe you, you find, you know, uh, you know, even a guy like David Riddich, who's played really well in L.A., Big game, Big game, Dave. Uh, remember that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was fun. But uh, there's options out there. There's not. They're not great options, but 
you only need a backup next year. Um, so those are the guys you, you look at. You want a guy that can come in for 20 games, 25 games, and not kill you? Um, so, or there's, you find a guy on the trade market in the summer, that, you know, maybe end of training camp, a, a team has a young goalie coming up that they really like and they want to get rid of their veteran backup. You give them a fifth round pick. There's, yeah. there's, there's options out there. I don't, I don't mind Ranta as a reclamation project. You're bringing in a guy who is a good attitude. Look, he's been hurt this year. A and lot. every year, that's his problem. Yeah, I mean, every year. But last year, he would had a two twenty three and nine ten, two forty five and 912. He played twenty seven games last year, twenty eight the year before, uh, nine ten, nine twelve, nine oh five with Arizona for twelve games. That was an injured year, but you know, I, I think yeah. that he's. I don't know. I think you can get him for nothing. He's already in Chicago. He's with the Wolves. Yeah, I, it's just I wonder how much it's injury this year that's making him look so bad. It could be it's, it's got a lot to do with it. Yeah, but then at the same time, like I see people asking about, like, what about John Gibson? What about Omar? Like, I don't think those the, guys are going to probably sign with contenders and are not going to come to back up Peter Morazic. Right? Those are guys that probably still feel Omar for sure is going to get a starting job. So yeah, yeah, he's big money. For he's not going to be, a, and yeah. you're not going to pay Omar. We'll get to someone comment. fired. Yes, um, but you're not <laughs> going to. A you're not going to get. Uh, he's not going to come here to be Peter Morazic's backup or be a tandem with Peter Morazic. No, right. He's been doing the tandem thing for two years. He probably wants to go be a starter somewhere. Yeah. I see, you know, the Detroit Red Wings throwing a lot of money at yeah. Venus Hallmark this summer. Yeah, or the Ottawa Senators backing up a, a Brinks truck to his house, saying, "Please come play for us." Uh, Gibson, I just I think he's beyond done. Yeah, and I don't think he's going to want to be a backup anyway. I think he still thinks he could be a starter somewhere. I just don't know if there's any GMs in the in the league that agree with him. Well, they they have to find something. You're because, a San Jose Shark, John Gibson. Yeah, I, I look. He's I in California. We all love Peter Mrazek. He's been great this year. There's no doubt about it. But if you're counting on this again next year. Uh, that's not a bet I'm very comfortable making due to the health, due to the age, due to the wear and tear. Yeah. He played probably, what, 10 more games this year than they probably intended him to, at least because of how bad Soda bloom has been. <laughs> yeah. You can't count on this Peter Mrazek again next year. And can't, I'm glad he's back. Don't yeah, get me you wrong. Can't, you can't count on it, but you know that it's in there. Sure. You know that he can do it. Um, and I, th I think if, if they weren't counting on him coming back and being able to count – replicate this season even just a little bit I'm, i don't think they would have signed him to a two-year extension so it's it's an yeah, investment I, it's an investment in him it is but it's kind of like for them with money like their financial situation it's okay why not like he's here we know him he's a good dude he's been good for us like why not just reward him bring him back we need a goalie anyway cool it makes all the sense in the world but I would like a little more security at his backup spot next year. Agreed. And if you have a guy here that is solid, he doesn't have to play fifty-five right. to sixty games. He's gonna. He's got fifty-one games this year. There's what eight games left, so fifty-five is probably where he'll hit. I mean, imagine this this game tonight got uh, Soderblom at least one more start. Mm -hmm. year, you know, one more than he would have had. So maybe they go back to the every other yeah. for the last few games. Um, but, you know, if he plays 55 games this year, that's probably more than we thought. That's 55 games without missing any. Yeah, right. Um, so if you, I mean, I, nothing has shown me. I know he's got some, some a bad run of injury luck here the past couple of years, but. That's he seems to be past that. Granted, it doesn't take much to get back to that, but but if you had another, uh, you know, a, a guy that you can count on that's going to give you, le you know, not a four point oh oh GAA and an eight eighty eight <laughs> save percentage, <laughs> yeah, then you could. The plan was not to play this many games for Marazic. They were going to be a pretty much tandem. And it just didn't work out that way. Uh, I well, see. look, we all thought that he was going to be the starter eventually. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we all, all said yeah. before the season, all three of us said, yeah. 
Soderboom probably starts more games than Mrazek this year, just based on his injury history. And, you know, we think Soderboom's going to have a breakout year. It's just, it just, it's never happened. Yep. We'll see. All right, we got to, we got to pay off our uh, segments. What do you want to do first, Law? We want to do four star? Uh, sure. Let's knock out the four star first because we have a winner. All right. Lucas Reichel is the four star of the game. His line, one goal, one assist. He ended the game with four shots on goal. Also credit with a takeaway, which led to the assist. So a really solid game for him. Uh, Plus two in 11.37 only of ice time. That, I believe, is not the lowest on the team. He had more than Slaggart, and he had more than Anderson. Well, and Joey it, Anderson had made it two points. It was plus three. Yeah. Making the well, best of your ice time. The Hawks had to spend some time on the PK, so that probably yeah. hurt that a bit. That's true. Based on, yes. Especially on that garbage Bedard interference call. Got two minutes for getting checked into the back of the net. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the worst calls I've seen all year. Egregious. Yes, not good. Yikes. That guy will not, that referee will not be getting any playoff games. I would hope not. <laughs> I would hope not. Hope not. Uh, Connor's Corner. Let's go there. Speaking of Connor Bedard. Winger Connor Bedard. Yeah, yeah. Connor Bedard with an assist, six shots on goal, 10 shot attempts. Cleaned up his room. 2007 of ice time. He did his laundry. His mom finally did his laundry. <laughs> yeah. Is he still watching He's us? still watching yeah. us. Of he course he is. Along. He was there at the watch along. And our, our buddy uh, Dom Cagney says, what do we think of Bedard at wing? Doesn't matter what we thought. Here's what Luke Richardson had to say. Quote, it allows Connor to be creative and be up front. He likes making plays down low and around the net, so obviously you're going to be the first guy back. It works out well. Yeah, uh, it doesn't sound like a one game thing. That's a, that's fine. Try it. it. Look, if Connor Bedard is not a long term NHL center, that's fine. He can have a wonderful career as an NHL winger and not have to worry so much about his defensive game as as a center. And be able to just focus on what he does best. Creating plays, scoring goals, putting up points. And if you watch tonight's game, a lot of, again, he had six shots on goal, ten shot attempts. A lot of those shots on goal and shot attempts came from the middle or right side. Mm -hmm. He's the kind of player that is not just going to be stationarily, you know. Yeah, he's going to move. He is a bobber and a weaver, and the lines kind of react to what he's doing. So, I wouldn't get too overly focused on where he's lined up when the puck is dropped yeah. because he's the kind of guy that's going to move all over the ice. And again, go look at his heat map from tonight. Very little for net left side, if I recall correctly. Yeah, well, even at center, he would not take every face off and line up at wing and transition to playing center You know, in this different responsibilities. But yeah, I, if, if he works out as a wing long term, like that's fine. I think you'll be able to to live with that. Leon Dreisaitl plays center, so that's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I so. don't I wouldn't I wouldn't worry too much about this one way or the other, to be honest with you. I think I think the Blackhawks want Connor Bedard to be a center long term. Um, but as you I agree with you, if it's if it's not in the cards for him, then okay, he'll just be really great on the wing instead of yeah. down the middle. Yeah. I think this was uh, a little bit of I want to reward Jason Dickinson mm-hmm. for playing so great this season. I'm going to put him up with those guys, and you're not going to put Jason Dickinson on the wing. Uh, and Bedard has been struggling at the faceoff dot, so this maybe gave him, and it also gives Bedard a little mental break for however games this is going to last. I don't see it lasting too long. Uh, obviously, there'll be that the lines won't change Tuesday night against the Islanders. You rarely ever change lines after a win, right, yeah. especially when you played as good as you did tonight. Um, but you know, Connor Bedard's never played this much hockey at this level in his in his in his life. So maybe right. giving him three or four games to take the mental break of not having to play center is just kind of easing them through these last few games of the year. And and he didn't seem to be bothered playing the wing. You, you no, you've read the numbers. Okay. He was he was very uh, active and, and uh, you know we'll see what happens. Luke has shown that he's not afraid to to mix around with whoever gets to play on that that top line yeah yeah i'm, I'm down for experimenting and look macklin celebrini is the center so that works too. Room. that's yeah. fine too hey the hawks are almost a third and that's how you get macklin celebrini <laughs> all right and the last thing we and, need to do and they may have oh. just knocked out a team from pennsylvania again that's a shame. That's another, again and joey anderson scored a goal Ooh. that's 
you know. Joey Anderson, Buddy Robinson, Buddy Rob- yeah, they kind of exactly, yeah. sound, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they roll off the tongue the same. Yeah, yeah Buddy Who's Robinson will right? just punch you in the face with no warning. Kill you. He will kill you. <laughs> Yeesh. All right, we got to uh, give the winner for Who's Your Hawk? Seymour Wiener. And Mario retrieved it from the, the from the rack. So once again, magic number might be, uh, we got to. I'm no good at magic numbers. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I can't, well, I'm this was game what, 74? 74. There's eight games left. Eight games left. And uh, I'm up, what, six on Jay? Yeah, that means your magic number is one. Up six on Jay. Up seven on Greg. I will need to win all eight games. You will to need win. to. Yeah. You'll need to sweep. My it to my win. elimination number is one. I need to sweep yeah. the rest of the season to win. So your yeah. magic number. You only need, uh, I need one more win by my one, math. One more win would Clinch force it. only a tie, and two more wins, or two more games where Jay doesn't win. Basically. Right. Uh, sure, it'll be fine. That all. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna win. <laughs> that would seal it. So yeah. All right. Got to figure out what the uh, what the season winner gets. A kick in the ass. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we had determined a kick in the nuts. I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't agree to that. You oh, must have not been here that day. Well, a whole was, lot yeah. of uh, <laughs> dessert items that are full of wheat. <laughs> <laughs> a gluten party! Hooray! <laughs> yes, all the gluten you can eat for 24 straight hours. Um, nice. By the way, in case you're wondering, the Blackhawks are now three. Points behind the Ducks for third worst in the league. Interesting. Well, that hey, that's where they won Bedard last year. Shark. No one's catching the Sharks. They 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 have forty <laughs> points. No but one's out sucking the Sharks. They uh they uh they were winning earlier. Yeah, they so won four to nothing over the St. Louis Blues. Ah. The St. Louis Blues <laughs> trying to like make believe that they're still got a shot at the playoff. They lost four nothing to the Sharks Blue at Blues. home. Please tell me Jordan Bennington was the goalie. Uh, let's find out. I can smell the wafting of the filled diaper up here. <laughs> he was Phil diaper. Was he a goalie? He was. Yes, yes he Phil was. Diaper. Yes, yes. Um, Phil diaper. Yeah, he's, he's French Canadian. He's a brother-in-law to right, Phil yes, McCracken. Yeah. Phil Dapier. No, it was uh, it was the other guy, Hofer. Joe Hofer. Joel Hofer. Yeah, more like Joe Blofer. <laughs> I've Hofer. <laughs> All right, guess what? It's been a long day. Yes, it is. We did sure a watch along. We haven't we eaten our ice cream yet. We've not eaten our ice cream no. yet. No, I might not. I might skip the Klondike and go get that Wendy's uh, orange get dreamsicle we'll thing. Get them both. Own. I can't do both. That bit is. Uh, that's true. That'll do it. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's well, been a lot of fun, everybody. Thank you for all of you who are with us throughout the game. Thank you, everybody who is with us in the post game show. Do us a favor. We are very close to 200 likes. Smash that like button for like us. Spike. Please, please, please. Yeah. Let's do a like spike or, here. Torts will be angry. Here. One, two, three. Spike. Yeah, don't. If you spike that, it might just disintegrate. It'll disintegrate. I, yeah. really, I, th- I feel it is being held together by those stickers. Yes. Uh, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to hopefully have a much. Uh, we need to get. We're gonna have uh, a much improved. Uh, we need to talk rule. with our our yeah Bulls uh, coworker, Big Dave. Get championship belt. Get a championship belt going here. That he's, would be. He's fun. got the Goon of the Night championship belt hookup. I would try a lot harder if it wasn't because I don't even really like wearing a helmet to be honest. No, it's not fun to wear. <laughs> it is painful. It doesn't fit any of us properly, and it's got this little bump in the middle that uh, I think is taking an IQ point or it's two off of my tetanus nail, and I can't afford uh, that score. <laughs> Yeah, and every There's nail and bolt off. in here is rusty. This is Charlie the Bacon Guy's helmet from when he was a child. Yes, from the eighties. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna need to get a new uh, a new prop for Who's Your Hawk next year. And we have the very in depth new rules to play along with too. We could use the the yeah the White Sox oh. guys just changed their rules on the uh, they do the what is it the Who's click, Your Socks click to pick, which is of course the oh the click to pick yeah that's that's original. Well, it was pick to click on. Yeah, it's totally original. So click to pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, they 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 have Did now they made it. That? There's point values for all the guys that they pick, so we, it's kind of the same way. So like, you we, know, you we guys have pick values. Bedard, we have values. It would probably be a one point, whereas if you pick a guy like, oh, okay. I don't know, a fourth line like a Mackenzie Hent whistle, his goals are worth five points. Sure, something like that. Uh, yeah, Ooh, we're not see? doing that. We're not doing math. That, that sounds like a job for someone else. And we're not doing uh, that. The we're Giggity just, says we're just going to come out with a. Uh, uh, point like a fantasy point system and stick to that through the season. I like that better. Yes. 
We get a chain. They sell those at the uh, Madhouse store. Paying fifty bucks for that. That's fifty bucks. 50 bucks. Yeah, remember, remember, we we did this before. <laughs> we would have had this. Right? We did this before. We would have yeah. had it, but it's fifty dollars <laughs> for foam. If you guys would yeah. like to donate one of those to us, you can uh, reach no, us. We're gonna. I think I think fashioning the uh, the Coors like goalie stick into. I just want the big hat. Something fun. Yeah, I want the fun. big hat. We need yeah, the big we, hat. It's got a long off season to figure yeah, this out. Yeah, well, big you hat. know. Well, you know how fast things work around here, especially in that department. Yeah, it's a long yeah. off season. We need to we need to light the fire under them, so maybe an email gets sent between now and October. Hmm. We'll see how that goes. I saw All his right. win six nothing. Oh, nice. Yeah, maybe Drew Camezzo needs to break his hand every game. Hey, and look, maybe Drew Camezzo comes up next year if he plays well enough. The end of the year and through the training camp and preseason. Maybe it's Camezo Morazic, and it's more of a 50 50 split than we've seen Maybe. this year. I'm Maybe. Fine. Sure. Calder Cup champion. Here's Drew the deal. I, I think That'd that nice. this staff, not to start a whole new show, but I think that the staff <laughs> has done a good job of like realizing where guys are in their development. Yes. So if they're like, all right, well, we think he can do it, then cool. I'm down. Yeah. And look, if it's totally fine if he's not here, I'm just saying. Maybe it's a possibility. He plays really it's, well. Maybe it shouldn't be he's a no just schedule. because. Who knows? Right. If he earns it, give it to him. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be the uh, the mo of this staff and organization. Uh, you know, I would prefer to have him play another season in the AHL. But Same. If, yeah. But if he pr- proved that he's NHL ready, let him play. Right. All right. We're gonna wrap things up. We are off tomorrow. It is Easter. Happy Easter to those that celebrate. We're off Monday. We're back Tuesday for a post-game show, so make sure you're there with us. And a little programming note. We're off Monday. Wednesday at 2.30. Yes, we are. In a row. Wednesday oh. at 2.30, we will have Nick Felino on the show, so make sure you're here for that. Uh, we look forward to it. So thanks to everybody who is with us. Thanks for getting us over 200 likes. We're almost at 210. Damn, good job. Keep spiking it. We'll talk to everybody Tuesday night ahead of Hawks and Islanders here on the CHGO Just Black Hawks coffee podcast. Get coffee. <laughs> no Coors Light. <laughs> Any coffee. We all silly like the mayor.